Hello and welcome to the third and final episode of our character select screen. In the previous two episodes, we were mostly working on our UI side of things, allowing us to choose a character from a menu. In this episode, we're finally going to take our option into the game by making it select a new character and placing that new character into the next level. So let's get started. So where we left off last time was we've got now this menu that we can choose one of three characters. What we want to happen is when we click on one of these, it's going to take us to the another level with this character that we've chosen. So how do we go about doing this? Well, there's a few ways you can do this. You can either use a save file system or we can use the option system inside of level transitions, which is what we're going to opt for today. So first thing to do is create these three characters as playable characters for our game. So I'm going to go into my side scroller BP folder and find my side scroller character. And I'm just going to create a child class for that. And we're just going to give that a different mesh. Just match what we've got as options. Now I've got Barbarous as one of them. There he is. Save that. And we'll make a duplicate of that. And the next one was there's an ice giant. Frost giant, sorry. And the last one, I can't recall. What was the last one? Forge. Okay, so we've got Barbarous, Forge, and the Frost Giant. Okay. So duplicate that. That'll be Forge. Okay, and they should all still match up with the animations because they're all using the same skeleton and everything else. Now, so that's all I need to do. And the reason why you have them as separate characters is Typically because most games where you choose different characters, they have different abilities, different movesets, and so on and so forth. So it makes sense to have them as separate characters. So here are our three characters. Let's just rename these. So we've got Barbarous. I don't think I've ever spelt that one the same all the way through. And we've got the Boss Giant. And finally you've got Forge. Okay, so now there are three different characters. So what I mean by the options when you do a level transition is that when we do open level, you'll see there's an options box for us. So let's go into our UI and go to the character slot. There it is. And we hit on the graph for this button. And on the button here, we do on clicked. So for the button, when we click it, we're going to do open level. And I'm going to do by object reference, but you can do by name as well if you wish. And I'm going to choose here the third person template, uh, which I think was size scroller as an example map. There we go. So the options is if you expand open the show advanced, is this bit here. Now this allows us to send over a string over to the game mode to change and choose different options that we may want to adapt and alter in the game in that next level. So in here, we're going to put in a string to represent what character we've chosen. Now, it's more than likely that you may be using options for other things too. And you want to separate these out with your query markers. So whenever you bring this in, you want to bring in a query marker, uh, which is a question mark, and just put in the key, which would be, in this case, char, C-H-A-R for character, and we'll do equals. And now I want to put in the name of the character I want to put in. So to do this, I need to plug in the character's name. So what I'm going to do from this options is I'm going to drag out and do append. And let's put in the query marker again, char equals. And on the append in the second part, the B, is going to be the data that's associated to this slot. So let's just split this open and let's get that data table row. So let's uh, data table row. Find out who is attached to this button. And that part further. Break character struct. And there's our character name. So our character name, we want to drag out again and get the string. So two 
something. And then we'll append this one again, because I want this to have the same name. So if I drag this out, actually, no, let's just actually just plug it straight in. That might be easier. Let's just do that. There we go. Okay, so we're plugging the character name into this key here. Uh, question mark char equals and then the name of the character. And that goes for the options here. Compile and save that. So when I enter the new level, it's going to bring in the level of the side scroller BP. Let's just take a look at that. Just here. And I'm going to replace this one here. So I'm going to get rid of the default side scroller character because we're going to be relying on the player start here instead. Now, uh, yeah, so we'll use that. And for this, we'll need the game mode. So the game mode will come through on the side scroller game mode here. And in here, that, that option string comes through. So the way you find that is on the functions. So you want to go to the functions override and look at the get default pawn class for controller. So you click on this and this will output the default pawn class that we need from this. Now in here, I can find a get option string. And this is the string that we enter when we en uh, put on the open level node itself. So what I want to do is drag from there. Let's just see what it comes out with so I can show you. Results. So let's just print string this and save that. So if I hit play now and go click on Barbarous here, you'll see it's come through with the query quick key of char equals Barbarous. So our next goal is to take that name and do a switch to find out which character we should be starting with. So let's go into the, back into the game mode, and in here we're going to find the substring of the car equals. So in here, you can do uh, find substring, and you can put in r equals. Okay, and that's going to count how many uh, indexes it is in of the string. So we've got two question marks at the start. So that's two. So this will return the value of two. The index of two is when it starts. I then want to add on to that. The amount of string characters I have here. So I've got one, two, three, four, five. So I'm going to add five to this. So I take the return value, add five. And that's going to give me the start of the name of the character. Now, if you're using your option string for many other things, such as level starts or anything like that, you may want to use a fixed length name for your characters. So what I mean by this is rather than typing in the word barbarous or frostrine or whatever, instead you want to replace that with a index number or a first four uh, first four characters of it or something something like that, something fixed in size. So when you're doing it, you know how long your string is going to be. In my case, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to fix it to four characters in length. So this is going to give me the substring of this, and I want to cut away this first content away from the option string. So you're going to go from the option string and you're going to do get sub string. And the start index is going to be this number here. And then the length is going to be the length of characters that your thing is going to be. And this is what I'm talking about. You can't have barbarous and four strikes. They're two different lengths in names. So I'm going to put in four here. And that's now going to give me the substring of the four characters of that character I've selected. So to test that out, I'm going to put a print string and send that through on here. And to get the four characters, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my UI button for the character slot. And as I'm sending over this character name here, I just want to get this substring of this thing of the first four characters. So I'm going to do substring, get start index zero, length and plug that in. So now I should only get the first four characters of the character's name. I hit play there and you see Bob, which is exactly what I want. So now I know that I can now go into my game mode and do a switch on string. Switch on string. Plug this in. And now I can add in 
the different characters. So I've got three characters, so let's go in here and add three cases. And on the right hand side details panel, I can type in the name of these cases. So that'd be Barb. Remember, it's only the first four letters, so four. And boss. And each one of these will output a different class. So let's just disconnect this return node, plug that into here. And here will be Barbara's character. And I'm going to put this on each one. That's Forge. And this is Boss. There we have it. So let's test this out. I go and push play and I click on one of my characters. I come in now with the barbarous character. Let's come out of there, play again and choose Frost Giant. And I'm now spawning with the Frost Giant. And there we have a completed character select menu screen. And there we have it, a fully functioning character select screen. I want to say a massive thank you again to all my patrons and YouTube members who voted for this mini series. If you too want to vote for a video, head over to patreon.com forward slash Ryan Ailey, become a silver tier member, and you can vote on a new video every single month. You also get access to all my videos before everyone else, and I want to say a massive thank you to everyone who's been supporting me over there and on YouTube members as well. Thanks very much for watching. Make sure you're subscribed, and I'll see you all next time. Bye, everyone.